Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ultimate tutorial on how to create your first D&D game using a time-proven step-by-step method. Watch me create an awesome play-by-post adventure using the following simple and easy guide. This structure can be easily upgraded to a live voice and video game. Step number one is to give a brief description of where the adventure starts off. So as an example, I have it where it begins your adventure at the Broken Tanker. This lively candlelit pub is located on the edge of, and you normally here I would include a town or a village or maybe a, a castle if you're thinking small. A picture or battle map works too if you're going to have a live voice and video game. The next thing I would do is I would introduce an NPC I want to role play. So a casual glance around the dining hall reveals your longtime friend, Condesina de Bardi. A headstrong young lady fond of hunting, riding, exploring places high-born ladies have no business being. A brave yet foolish friend that is currently trying to muscle her way into a game of liar's dice between two weathered dock hands. A picture works as well. Now in this case, I introduce the character, I introduce what her physical and what her um, role-playing traits are because she's a friend, so you would know that. And now I get to role-play her. Now I, have, I would be talking to my players at this point through you know, her perspective. The next step is to introduce the central problem. Your longtime friend, Contesina de Bardi, cannot see, conceal the sorrow adorning her face. A few funny jokes and recent stories are all it takes to release a flood of poorly muffled sobs and hiccups. She says her father has arranged her marriage to a man one decade her senior. You cannot let this stand because, and then you give a reason. Why is this a problem for the adventurers? You tell them it's a problem because you care deeply about your friend and this is a travesty, this is a, a really big problem, this is an embarrassment, maybe you're in love with her, maybe she's supposed to be an integral part of your business, maybe uh, it threatens some kind of oath of loyalty that you took, you have to come up with a reason why this is a problem. The next step is the call to action. What are you going to do? Well, you aren't going to let a washed up loser with a double chin and goatee take your best friend from you. Fortunately, Katasina's father might be persuaded to end this betrothal if you resolve a serious problem for him. Unfortunately, he is pretty stubborn and you can only think of one thing that might change his mind. With the sinking feeling in your gut, you realize you will need to bring down the red brand Corsairs. So now we understand that this is how you solve the central problem. The problem the only way to solve the central problem. Okay, describe the challenge. So what are the red brand Corsairs? The red brand Corsairs are a smuggling ring that imports drugs and poisons into your coastal city. Rumor around the docks are that they have a half dozen members and a number of guards on the payroll. How else could they have eluded the city watch for so long? This won't be easy, and the added challenge of taking credit for this takedown makes this task all but impossible, save for the most cunning and resourceful men. So now I have to describe why it's a challenge. Well, they have a lot of members. They have people, informants. They have guards, so you can't rely on the authorities. And you're adding in uncertainty as well. You don't know why they've succeeded so long, why they've eluded the city watch for so long. So there is an element of mystery here. Furthermore, um, I describe how arduous this will be if you're not clever. So you need to come up with ideas. Intelligence and wisdom is going to be crucial to figuring out how to solve this riddle. Next is to ask your players how they solve this problem. And this is where the most variance comes in the campaign. You ask an open a question and you challenge their creativity. So the player might come up with this answer for the problem that I presented. You might not be a highborn, but you have friends in all the right places. You visit the harbor master to try to convince him to find the Red Baron Corsair's hideout. So you're thinking, okay, if he's a smuggling ring, then maybe he has some boats, and the harbor master would know about the boats that come into the harbor. Okay. At this point, you would ask your player to roll a skill check. You might show a picture of the harbor master. You might show a battle map or some art of going over there and talking to him. 
but eventually you could ask for a skill check. The Harbor Meister might be a friend, but this is a dangerous favor. Roll a DC 12 persuasion check to see if he gives you what you need. Reward players for creativity and encourage them to press on if they fail. Okay, so the reason why this is dangerous is kind of obvious. The Redburn Corsairs are a smuggling ring. They have people on the payroll. They might just kill the Harbor Master if he informs on them. They might bribe someone to, you know, take him down from his position. He might lose his job. So there's a even though he's a friend, he might not be as helpful because of the pressure the Red Brand Corsairs have him under. Why did I select DC 12? There's a whole art to selecting DCs, the difficulty check of the skill checks. Typically, I want to keep it between 10 or 8 if it's easy, and then if it's medium, maybe 12, 14, if it's really hard, 16, 18. I kept it 12 this time because he's a friend, and also it was a pretty creative idea, so I'll give him a little bit of leeway there. But this is the next, and this is an important moment, adding a ticking clock, adding a time limit here. A time limit isn't always a hard time limit. Sometimes it's a soft time limit where it gets harder and harder as more time passes. You only have three days to find the Corsairs, and your first night was spent yelling at a supposed friend for no gain. Katasina needs you, and time is running out. After trying to patrol the docks at night and offering bribes, to the dockhands for information to no avail, you realize that you have only one more shot to get this done. You decide to sell everything you own and contact a local criminal to buy drugs. Hopefully you can follow them back to their hideout. So here we we pace through three different solutions that the players have come up with. Three pretty creative solutions. First was the harbor master. They obviously failed the persuasion check. The harbor master didn't give him anything. <laughs> the players role played their hearts out. They yelled at the guy, but no good, no dice. Next, they thought about, okay, well, let's go to the docks and let's try offering bribes. Hey, if they bribe people, maybe we can bribe people. Well, your wallets aren't as big as their wallets, so it's another DC check. Probably some kind of deception, maybe persuasion, maybe intimidation. Depends on you how you they phrase their wording, but. They failed the DC on that one. They failed, you know, after all the art and all the NPC roleplay, no good. And the last one is that they decide to sell everything, right? They go all in, sell all of their items, gives them, you know, all the money that they can possibly get. And this will this will make the DC a little bit easier because you have everything on, on the line. And you have this cool idea of actually purchasing drugs, which is a really cool idea. So maybe you can actually just make this automatically succeed and you follow them back to their hideout. Now it's time to set up the final battle. It costs you everything you own and your shoes, which is funny, but you manage to follow one of the red brand lackeys to their hideout, a filthy two-story flat with brown pasty walls that smells of cheap alcohol and salted jerky. The windows are closed, but you can see the flicker of candlelight and moving shadows from within. The time has come to test your talents. You draw your dagger and climb to the second story. Notice how I'm describing the tastes, the smells, the touch of everything here. The, the, what you see is very easy to show to your players. You can just throw down a, an art, piece of art. But describing the smells, the tastes, the touch, how it feels, that and how what you hear is very, very important. And you should describe that regardless of whether you're in a play-by-post game or if you're in a live voice and video game. So this is the setup. At this point I would introduce a battle map, I would introduce some art to show them where they're at. Players go in, they decide how they arrange their characters for combat, some tactics occur, some role playing, some tactics, some combat, roll, 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 we'll see what happens. And in this example game we see that you had never killed before and it felt terrible. The smugglers were so drunk that they barely put up a fight. A few well-aimed blows was all it took to subdue them. It was all going to plan until your good friend Colin, who guards the main gate, walked in. You will never forget the look in his eyes as you plunged your blade into his chest. People call you a hero. You saved Contesina. You saved the town. You killed a friend. 
what does that make of you? Could you have done this differently? So, yeah, that's the resolution. You went in there, maybe the combat wasn't as good, maybe they rolled poorly, but you always throw in a twist for the final, final battle. Maybe it's a special ability for the boss, maybe it's some kind of terrain change. In this case, I introduced another character. I introduced a guard. I already hinted at this, that there were guards in the payroll, but throughout this entire scenario, I hadn't actually acted on that hint yet. The player should have known about it. I gave them a warning. It was fair. It was fair game. And so a guard came in, and they couldn't adapt to it. They had to kill the guard. How could they have done it differently? Well, it's a lot of ways. First, you could have, I don't know, asked for a trusted friend to come and be a lookout on the other sides, on the outside of the building, so no guards come in. That's just one potential solution. There are dozens. But yeah, could they have done this differently? And that's the end of the campaign. You go back, your heroes, you save Pantasina, and maybe her father gives you a little gold reward, gives you maybe a title, gives you another job. And that's how you run your first campaign, first game, and possibly campaign, if it leads into some more games in Duchess of Dragons. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time.